Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Ava. Good morning. Ava's not done with breakfast. Okay, <clears throat> let's begin this commentary. Today is July 29, Wednesday. Today, we are celebrating a feast in the church. It's the feast of St. Martha. Now, who is Martha? Martha is the sister of Mary and Lazarus. Lazarus. Okay, so what's, uh, what's special about Martha and this, this family of, uh, of uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? This family is, um, is a friend of Jesus and his disciples. We could imagine that our Lord uh, visited this family occasionally when he wanted to rest from his many uh, travels and his preaching all over um, Jerusalem, you know, and, and, and towns nearby. He would stop by in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in order to uh, rest a while eh, with the family. And so... Today, we're celebrating that Feast of Martha, St. Martha. And there are two gospel readings we could choose from. The first choice was that story of the death of Lazarus. When Jesus uh, came to visit after Lazarus has died. The other gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. And it has to do with that story of Jesus doing one of those visits to the family. And what do we read here? Okay, let me, let me read what, what that gospel is and we're going to comment on that. So Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who was beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Okay, so when our Lord arrived in their house, Okay. He was welcomed by the family, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. Okay. And he sat down perhaps in their uh, living room. And Mary immediately positioned herself right by the feet of Jesus in order to listen to what he had to say to them. She eagerly welcomed him and, and sits right uh, by Jesus' feet in order to listen to what he might have to say to them. Martha, on the other hand, burdened with much serving. So Martha was the type who, instead of paying attention to her guest, to her very special guest, Jesus, in a more personal way, she immediately turned around and started doing things in the kitchen and started worrying about preparing their food and started worrying about entertaining them. Okay? And, and she dared to complain to Jesus and asked him, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar to some of us who tend to complain when we're doing our chores and then we say, Hey, why are you not helping me? Uh, you're just playing there. You're just doing this. You're just doing that. You're not helping. Right? <laughs> Sounds like Martha, right? Martha dares to complain. Tell her to help me. She tells Jesus. Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply. You know, maybe our Lord looks at her smiling, says, and maybe, you know, telling her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried. Anxious and worried about many things. I don't have time to do this later. I need to do this now. I have, to, I have to do the uh, worried, worried, worried about many things. Yet, only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen 
the better part. And it will not be taken from her. You're too worried. Many times we're like that. We are like Martha. We're too worried about the affairs of everyday life. We tend to, <laughs> we tend to be so preoccupied with what I need to do. I need to do. I need to be efficient. I need to be effective. I need to do this. I need to do that. Right? We're so worried about the affairs of the world. And we forget about the one thing necessary. Well, let's see. What is that one thing necessary? What is that only thing that matters in this world for us? What is that? Become a saint, Become a saint Joseph. Very good. <laughs> Become a saint. That is the only thing that is necessary. Become a saint. Who cares? Whether you get all your A's in your school work, eh? or you graduate as valedictorian in your high school. Who cares if you're summa cum laude in college? Who cares if you got plenty of money and you're a billionaire? Who cares if you uh, 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 what invent the most important uh, software that the world uses? Who cares if you lose your own soul. Our Lord tells us and reminds us in another gospel, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Only one thing is necessary to become a saint. Now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. How do we become a saint though? That's the question to ask, right? How and where do we become a saint? The answer to that question is in the balance that we strike and achieve between the disposition of Martha and the disposition of Mary. Okay? The combination of this is what constitutes our sanctity. What does that mean? It means that we... People in the middle of the world, ordinary Christians that we are, we become a saint by doing a Martha. Being, uh, 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 being conscious and conscientious about our duties. Right? Martha was not doing a bad thing. Martha was doing a very good thing. She was attending to her duties. She was like the mother hen, I suppose, of the household. And she needed to attend to, you know, serving Jesus and doing good things for entertaining the, the, her guests. That is a good thing. That's a good thing. And Mary was doing a good thing too, of being at the foot of Jesus and just absorbing everything that Jesus was telling them. Right? But why did Jesus sort of rebuke Martha and told her, Hey, you're so worried about many things, yet only one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the better part. What does that really mean? It means that although Martha was doing a good thing, she was missing, missing one important point. And what is that? At that moment, when she was busy serving, and doing all sorts of things, she might have forgotten the motive of why she was serving. She might have forgotten and become oblivious of the purpose of what she was doing. In other words, she could have forgotten to sanctify that moment of serving. That while she was serving, she was not really thinking of God. She was not putting God in her chores. She was not putting God in the service that she was rendering to God, by the way, <laughs> to Jesus, right? But at those moments, she was oblivious of that. 
She was not keeping that in mind. She was not conscious of what she was busy doing all of that work for. Okay? And that was what was missing. And that is what our Lord is reminding us in this gospel. We need a balance in our lives. We need to have the right perspective of why we do what we do. It is not wrong to excel. In fact, I have been the first one telling you excellence is what we have to achieve in everything we do, right? From our chores to our studies to projects to everything we do, we need to exhibit that excellence. We need to excel and be very good at what we're doing and really have the, have the intention to serve and help other people. But on top of that, why are we doing all of those things for? It cannot be because of vanity. It cannot be just because we want to push ourselves to the limit. It cannot be just because, you know, we want to excel for excellence sake. It's not because we want the adulation and praise of people. No. Everything should be done for the greater glory and honor of God. That is the only thing that's worthwhile. To do everything for the greater glory and honor of God. That is the only thing necessary. Because that is what will turn our daily work into a sanctifiable work. That's what's going to turn our chores, our service to others, our studies, and anything we do, our professional work for those of you working. It will turn all of that into sanctifiable activities that will bring us at the feet of Jesus. So we have to have a balance. We have to be able to do things that we need to do in life, but with a perspective of Mary put into our work. Mary was the more contemplative type. She was there thinking of Jesus. She was there absorbing the teachings of Jesus. She was there showing her love for Jesus. We need to put a Mary into our daily affairs. We need to put the attitude of Mary into our work, into our professions, into our chores, into our family life, into our relationships with other people. That is what will make all of our concerns, er earthly concerns, worthwhile and sanctifiable. Understood? Okay, that's it for us, folks. Uh, we got a few people joining us on this call. Uh, you know, we invite you to join us every morning. This happens every morning in the Kleachko household where we uh, comment on uh, the gospel of the day. So if uh, you're awake this time, wherever you are in, uh, in the world, well, this happens around 7.15-ish, somewhere there, uh, just after breakfast. And uh, we start our days this way. You're welcome to join us. Okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.